Hello, I'm Devin. Welcome back to another Rana tutorial. In our last video, we went over the cycle phase, which is the beginning of every turn, and now we're ready to move on to the time units. So, time units activate right after the cycle phase. We start on time unit 1, and they act as both a resource and a pacemaker for the game. Um, so, each player is allowed 6 time units per turn, and Starting at time unit 1, we'll take a look at some examples here. If we were to activate Healing Touch, which you can see on the left has a cast time of 4, uh, on time unit 1 it would take all of time unit 1, all of time unit 2, all of 3, and all of 4, and it would push us into time unit 5, and we would be able to continue on with our turn from there. Um, during that time period, we aren't allowed to do any other actions uh, because our character is going through the action of casting this spell. Uh, same for feats. If we then went, it to, uh, went to cast Ground Lightning, that has a cast time of 2, and it would take all of time unit 5 and all of time unit 6, which would then end our turn. We wouldn't be able to do any other actions. Um, and I have this out here just to note, even with a cast time of 0, because we used all of time unit 6, which immediately ends our turn, we wouldn't be able to cast anything with a time unit of 0. We can no longer make any actions, and it is our opponent's turn. Uh, so we'll run back to time unit 1 here to take a look at how these uh, can be affected by opponents. So one thing to note is that all spells and feats take effect on, on the last time unit. So if we cast this here, as we said before, it would take all of 1, 2, 3, and 4, pushing us into time unit 5. But the actual effect on the card, which is heal target ally for 5, um, doesn't take effect until the 4th time unit. So during that period of the 4th time unit, that's when we would gain that uh, 5 health here and move on to time unit 5 in which we could continue on with our turn. Um, if we did these in reverse order and we activated Radiant Glow first before Ground Lightning, Radiant Glow takes zero time units to cast, so we would stay on time unit 5, and then we could activate Ground Lightning, which would take all of time unit 5 and all of time unit 6, which would again end our turn. Uh, so be careful of the order that you play your spells and feats. Um, if we were at time unit 4 and we wanted to cast healing touch it's just not an option we aren't able to do that because we don't have enough time units in our turn uh, because moving on from time unit 4 it would take all of time unit 4, 5, 6 and 7 which is well past our 6 time units per turn um, now we can take a look at some defensive options. If we were to go to our time unit 1 again and say that our opponent has a bank spell and we are here. Uh, if we activate ground lightning, again that takes all of time unit 1 and all of time unit 2, but because we see that our opponent has a bank spell which would be back here on his banked slot, um, we have to ask during the change of each time unit if they want to take an action. So we declare that we're going to cast Ground Lightning, and in response to that we ask if they would like to take any actions. In this case they would say yes, and they would flip their card over, which is backflip, and this uh, repositions you. So. We would look at the time units to see if this effect happens before ours. In this case, uh, the number of time units that it takes to cast this is 2, which is the same as our Ground Lightning. And in this game, uh, defensive options always win in a tie. So if we run through it, we would take all of time unit 1, all of time unit 2, 
and our effect would happen at the end of time unit two, which would push us into time unit three. Um, and the same thing would happen for them. So they declared it at the same time that we did. So it would take all of time unit one and all of time unit two, in which their effect would happen before ours because it's de a defensive option. And they would move back two units, pushing us into time unit three and putting them just out of range for our ability which has a, a range of three, and as you can see here, they're not within range for that. Um, if we take a look at a different option for a bank spell, and we went to, well, that was unneeded. If we went on to uh, do a basic attack, every player is allowed one basic attack per turn. Um, you would take a look at... Alright, we're back, and as I was saying before, if we were to do our basic attack, we would look at the number of time units that our attack takes, and because of this weapon, uh, it stays at the default of one. So if I didn't have anything equipped, our attack would still take one time unit, but some weapons take a little bit more or potentially don't have a cast time for their basic attacks. But in our case, we do, and it's one. And if they had this banked, and we were on time unit three, we declare our basic attack, which is gonna take one time unit. We ask our opponent if they would like to take any actions. They say yes, and they flip this over and before our basic, basic attack uh, even happens, they're gaining that two defense. And then we would move on and end time unit three because that's the duration of our basic attack. We would then calculate our damage and we would see that the plus two defense that they gained was enough to block our basic attack or something like that. Um, that's basically all there is to know uh, about cast times and uh, time units. There are exceptions to every rule. Some cards will say that the effect takes place on the first time unit that it's being cast, but still has a cast time of three or something like that. Um, there are spells that delay the cast times for the activation of uh, different pages, but in general, those are the rules for cast times. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. For more, please check out our YouTube channel, our website at rana.com, and all of our social media, which will be linked below. Thank you for watching.